So the Supreme Court's recent ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin is now being used in the Texas suppressor lawsuit to remove the NFA's restrictions from Texas-made suppressors. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the NFA and GCA need to be done away with, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to mention that if you're interested, you can now purchase channel merch. You can purchase a shirt like this one, and then we have two other designs as well. One of the shirts is in two different colors. So I will leave a link down below. That's a great way to support the channel. And if you do end up purchasing a shirt and you receive it, go ahead over to my Instagram, tag me with you and your shirt on Instagram. And again, I just like to see everybody who purchased the shirt, who's supporting the channel, and I really like engaging with you. And that's another great way to do that is over on Instagram. So like I said in the intro, the state of Texas has now just amended their lawsuit against the ATF in their Made in Texas suppressor lawsuit. This lawsuit is now using the recent Supreme Court decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin to argue that the ATF and the NFA have no history or tradition which supports their control of these items. Because there is no history or tradition that supports the federal regulation of Made in Texas suppressors, the state of Texas is asking the court for a permanent injunction against the regulation and taxation of these suppressors. Now, if you're not aware, this lawsuit arises out of Texas House Bill 957, which passed last year. HB 957 aimed to exempt from federal regulation all suppressors that are made in Texas and remain in Texas. HB 957 exempted silencers, which are manufactured in Texas and which remain in Texas, from federal firearms laws and regulations, including the federal registration requirements under the NFA. The law that Texas passed requires that suppressors made in Texas be stamped made in Texas, and it bars all local agencies and entities from enforcing inconsistent federal laws against Texas residents who purchase these made in Texas suppressors. The claim behind this law, which passed in Texas, is that since these items are made and sold in the state, they do not fall under interstate commerce and therefore fall outside of the purview of federal regulation by the ATF. Currently, federal law regulates suppressors, making it illegal for someone to own a firearm suppressor for personal use without paying a tax to the federal government. It also makes it a federal offense to possess, manufacture, transport, repair, or to sell a suppressor unless a person complies first with the federal guidelines. Now, after Texas passed this law last year, the ATF sent out a letter essentially threatening that they will enforce the NFA and GCA's regulations against these made in Texas suppressors and they will enforce it against anyone who buys or sells these items. After the ATF sent out that warning letter, Texas decided to file a lawsuit on behalf of individual Texas plaintiffs against the ATF. In the original complaint, the state of Texas argued that federal regulation of these items that are made and stay within the state is not permitted since it does not impact interstate commerce. They also argued that federal regulation of these items by the ATF drastically impacts Second Amendment rights and allows an impermissible tax on a right. In response to the lawsuit filed by Texas, the ATF and DOJ responded by filing a motion to dismiss the case. A motion to dismiss is simply a legal mechanism where either side can seek to have a case thrown out by a court because of something like a failure to state a claim. Subsequent to the motion to dismiss, the state of Texas actually filed their first amended complaint and then asked the court to find the motion to dismiss by the ATF uh, to be moot, which the court ultimately did agree that that whole motion to dismiss was moot and the case was proceeding forward. But now the state of Texas has filed a second amended complaint. And the amended complaint here adds in strong second amendment arguments because of the Supreme Court's recent ruling in Bruin. In Bruin, Justice Thomas in writing for the majority stated, in keeping with Heller, we hold that when the second amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the constitution presumptively protects that conduct. To justify its regulation, the government may not simply posit that the regulation promotes an important interest. Rather, the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation. Only if a firearms regulation is consistent with the nation's historical tradition may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. So under this new framework, the state of Texas is arguing that the ATF cannot prove that their regulation of made in Texas suppressors has any basis in history or tradition of the Second Amendment. In the new complaint, Texas argues, there is no historical tradition that can justify regulation of making firearm suppressors for non-commercial personal use in Texas, including requirements that citizens ask permission before making a firearm suppressor, pay a $200 tax, place a serial number on the firearm suppressor, and to register it. They go on to state, the government may not justify the regulation at issue as part of a more general American tradition of regulating for public safety. Courts may not apply means and scrutiny in the Second Amendment context. Moreover, there has never been a public safety justification or any other legitimate justification 
for regulating the making of firearm suppressors for non-commercial personal use. Firearm suppressors are not dangerous and are not often used in crimes. The state of Texas later argues in their complaint, there is no historical analog justifying the challenge regulations. Indeed, the current regulation of the private making of firearm suppressors dates only to 1968. But then they hit on something also very important. They state, of course, a court is not obliged to sift the historical materials for evidence to sustain a statute. That is the respondent's burden. In the same way, the court is not obligated to look for evidence to justify the regulation at issue in this case. Instead, the burden is completely on the ATF to point to a historical regulation in 1791 that supports their conduct here. Only if they can find something like that may the court then even consider that a regulation of this type is potentially valid. But even if the court can find uh, some sort of historical analog or maybe agrees that maybe there is some sort of historical analog, it still can find that the ATF actions is a violation of the Second Amendment. Just because there is maybe some historical analog that the ATF can point to, it doesn't mean that the court still couldn't find that that is not sufficient enough. And the reality is the ATF is going to have a hard time finding some sort of historical analog. Firearm suppressors are not dangerous and were not regulated at all for the first several decades after their invention. And even more so, the regulation of private making of firearm suppressors for personal use postdated their invention by even more than five decades. Because of that, the ATF has no historical support for what they are doing here in this case. And again, the ATF's argument that the regulation here is for public safety is 100% irrelevant now. We no longer balance interests under the two-step approach. Instead, all that matters is the text and history of the Second Amendment. And that is not on the side of the ATF here in this case and other Second Amendment cases as well. So that is the major change that has now happened in this Texas suppressor lawsuit. Now Texas has strong Supreme Court authority to support that there is no historical basis for this type of ATF regulation under the NFA, and therefore the Texas law must be upheld. When this case was originally filed, the arguments that were put forward were much more focused on other issues like the Commerce Clause and other rights as well, and the whole Second Amendment arguments were more secondary. But now the Second Amendment arguments are much more in the forefront because of that recent Supreme Court ruling. And that is why the Bruin decision was so important. That decision is now trickling down to a ton of cases and adding major support to challenges of these types of Second Amendment violations. So we will definitely be keeping our eyes on this case and even more so now. If we get any updates, I will definitely let you guys know. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel algorithm rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.